Hi, my name is Steve Fuse. Welcome to my channel. We're talking about the continued series about what it takes to make money, the three types of income you can make in the mortgage station and final expense. But today I want to talk to you about the three reasons why agents fail in this business. This is something that's, that's uh, dear to my heart, has been for a lot of years, actually. That's why we developed in our agency a very specific training program that we put all of our agents through. Uh, it is not a one-and-done system. It's an ongoing training system, uh, meaning that we are involved in every phase of the agent's success. Dialing, uh, case strategies, product selection, in-home help, uh, you know, basically everything from getting the, the policy uh, written from submission to commission. And, you know, teaching our agents to be agents, number one, but also to be better agents. And it's not the, the recruit, recruit, recruit mentality, sign them up, uh, best of luck. You know, I was reading a post the other day where the guy said that the success in this business is signing up agents in mass. Uh, and then uh, turn them loose and do as little hand-holding as possible. Well, I'll tell you right now, I reject that idea. It's never been my uh, idea. It's never been my philosophy. That's the reason why we have so much turnover in this business. And look, it works for some people. If you're willing to go out there and build your agency with that business mindset, and that's what it is. It's a business mindset, and it's a business philosophy or a business plan. And some people are okay with that. I simply have not been okay with that. If your recruiter is talking to you uh, in, you know, right, right from the get-go, from day one, about making a list and going out and recruiting a bunch of people before you even license, that's a warning sign, folks. That means it's it's one of those MLMers, those network marketing type IMOs where it's all about recruiting. You're going to make yourself rich off of uh, the back of others. You're going to provide little or no support to them. And they know that the numbers in the business are very simple. They're clear, uh, like there are in many different uh, type of businesses. And that is, is the old 80-20 rule. Well, in this business, it's more like the 90-10 rule, meaning that about 90% of people that sign up quit. And the reasons why is the majority of people are signing up with those type of IMOs and those type of recruiters. So, look, I get 100 probably more than that, text a week, uh, people ask me, hey, Steve, what's the best IMO? And I'm telling you right now, that's not the right answer or that's not the right question. It's one of two right questions. And if you don't know the questions to ask, if you're looking at the industry and, and you're unaware or, um, you know, ignorant in, in terms of, you know, what questions to ask, that don't blame yourself. That's, you know, this industry or getting into this industry can be quite confusing because you've got a lot of people that are motivated by trying to recruit you, but they're not motivated to try to train you because they don't know how to train you. They've never sold any insurance. They're in it for, you know, again, to recruit a bunch of people. Some are going to stick and some will make them rich. You need to get my document, and it's right here on my screen, the most important answers that you must have before signing that, with that IMO recruiter. Okay, so uh, get it. The link will be in the bottom of, of the uh, description. Uh, it's part of our Agent Success Academy, as you can see right, right, right there. <laughs> Uh, and you want to make sure you get that download and, uh, you know, just go check off the questions. And you know, the document is designed where you can, you can ask the question, put their answer down there, and then comments. Uh, and you just print one out for everybody that you interview with. And just go down the list and you'll be able to narrow down and make a very good decision, uh, one would hope, on, uh, on who you want to be with. But again, getting back to uh, this, the topic of this video, which is the top three reasons why agents fail. You know, there are two sides to every coin. And the same goes for a particular business theory, which I just discussed with you when it comes to recruiting. And you've probably heard the, the expression before, in order to succeed in business, find out what successful people do and do that. You know, this same logic can be applied to the flip side of the coin. Find out what unsuccessful people do and don't do that, right? You know, internet searches return thousands of pages about how to be successful, but there's very little information about how not to fail, right? And I believe failing is part of the of successful journey. Just the problem is that people fail two or three times uh, and they quit. And quitting is a permanent solution to a temporary problem, 
right? Failing is temporary. It's how we learn. Like I said before on these videos, when you're, when you're, if you've ever had children, they fail a lot of times on learning how to walk. Well, you don't slack it upside the head and say never walk again because you weren't designed to walk, right? It's part of the process. By failing, they eventually learn how to walk. They don't quit. So you had to be willing to fail, but quitting should never be an option. Has it ever you know, occurred to you uh, why insurance agents fail? Hopefully so. Hopefully you saw the title of this video and it attracted you to come here and, and, and spend just a few minutes with me. But when we compare successful agents with those who didn't make the cut, there are three common denominators that explain why insurance agents fail right? It's certainly difficult to talk about, but there should be some discussion nonetheless. Number one, agents fail, I believe, because of unrealistic expectations. Most insurance agents fail because they had unrealistic expectations and expected too much too soon. This shouldn't be a surprise to you because I talk to you all the time about you got to control the six inches between the two ears. Because if you don't control your mindset, you set unrealistic expectations. And because you had unrealistic expectations and didn't meet those expectations, you get depressed, you get down, you get discouraged. When you put all those things together, you begin to lose the heart for the business. And then once you lose the heart for the business, there's not a whole lot anybody can do to revive you, right? This typically results when the business isn't sufficiently capitalized to allow for the time it takes to show a profit. New agents fail to understand that successful agents rarely succeed because of sales. They succeed because of renewals. This is especially true for property and casualty agents who earn very low commissions compared to life agents, right? Which is why I don't recommend property and casualty. It's also why I don't recommend doing health insurance. Life insurance is plenty if you work the business diligently. You wake up every day with intention. You're relentless, right? And uh, you are intentional in your daily activity, I guess I should say, right? Agents who strike out on their own without significant capital in the bank typically lose hope very early on. And this is the problem going back to that recruiting mentality. There's no money in recruiting short term, which is why I don't recommend you doing it full time, period, for at least until you're one or two years in the business. Or let's just put it this way, until you're able to make twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month in overrides, you have to be out there cash flowing your business. Well, how do we cash flow our business? We cash flow our business by writing applications, right? That's how we cash flow our business, right? And that's why if you don't cash flow your business, you can't stay in the business. You've got lead costs. There's not any other costs really in this business, other than maybe you know you have to have a car, you got to have uh, gas to put in the car. Uh, if you're not doing virtual sales, you have to go out there so there's time involved but we don't have a whole lot of hard costs in this business right so it doesn't you know and we get paid so very well it doesn't take much if you're writing you know three four applications a week you're making several thousand bucks right it doesn't take a lot to cash flow your business and then you can if you decide that you want now mind you if you look at my first two videos on how we make money the first one was high commissions the second was passive so you're building that over time by writing policies the third one is that passive income. So now you can start doing that if you want to, if your IMO allows you to do so, and you have a comp plan that will back it up, right? But again, the ones that do that full time, those that, those, those that don't lead by example, they, they, they don't leave from the front, they're recruit, recruit, recruit. There's no money in it early on, and so they never stay in the business, right? So look, once that happens, it's almost downhill from there because those unrealistic expectations are always a result of poor planning in every single case. The agent did not complete the needed due diligence when developing their business plan, or they simply did not have a business plan at all. So look, many agents are not prepared to put in the hard work required to make sure that their business succeeds. I find that to be the case. You've got to have a good work ethic whether that be 10 to 15 hours a week, you got to show up 10 or 15 hours a week. If you look at this thing as, you know, just sticking a toe in it, it's very difficult to succeed in this. There isn't a lot to learn, you know, but there are some things you've got to be able to do that are successful. Let me preface that by saying there's not a lot to learn 
because uh, as long as you have a coach or mentor that knows what they're doing, they're leading from the front, they're actively or have actively sold insurance, they're current up on their products, because there are a lot of products out there, right? And so you have to have someone that you can that you can work with to work, you know, to to uh, to strategize your cases before you go out in the home. Because if you don't do that and you're brand new, you don't have that support, then you're selecting the wrong products and they're not getting through underwriting. And there again, you're out there writing eight or nine or ten applications. You bought the leads, you bought the gas, you got in the car, and you spent the time to go out there and visit with them, and you're getting one or two out of ten approved, that becomes a cash flow issue, right? So look, you've got to decide that you're going to work the hours that, you know, and, and you've got to make sure that you pay yourself, uh, you know, each week, but you've got to also put back a reserve. I, I always recommend putting back 10% of your income so that you can put that into your lead program. Because here's what happens a lot of times that people don't do that and they spend a hundred percent of the commissions, Right, and now they can Now they're out of business because they can't buy any more leads. You've got to buy leads on a weekly basis. Right. The number two thing is agents fail because of lack of support. Now again, this is dear to me because I, I identified this, you know, many many years ago that this whole recruit a bunch of people, throw them on the wall might work. Right, in terms of a business model, you got, you got if you bring a lot of people in, some will make it. That's all. Some will, some won't. So what? It's I reject it. It's not part of what we do here. It's not part of our training program. We have a ground level support training program that lasts forever. It's intensive for the first ninety days, but we talk to our agents on every single case, on every single appointment, as long as they want us to. We're here. We're available. We have the resources. I did that because I felt like last. Lack of support, lack of training is one of the top reasons why people fail. It's why you have the turnover you have in this industry, right? In most cases, failure to have access to a support system is more of the fault of the person or organization who recruited them. New agents feel the necessary tools are just a product brochure or a laptop and a telephone. It is unrealistic to expect to sell insurance products because you have an insurance license. Licensing and sales do not go together. Competing in an industry with other agents who have spent years honing their craft requires product knowledge. It requires market knowledge. And most importantly, selling skills and be able to connect with them like you would connect with your own family. Look, all of these attributes can be obtained by spending time with a mentor who can share their expertise and help you see the picture for what it is and not for what you'd like it to be. All agents need a support system, right? But new agents need the system more than ever. A mentor or other support system will help you avoid making mistakes that everyone before you has made. Why go it alone when you can access the experience and wisdom of others who have been there and who have done that? This is a big thing for me, and let me just expand on a little bit more. Because we have it here. We have, I think we have the best training program and the best support system around. Not the IMO. The IMO has a great training program as well. I'm talking about ground level support. I'm talking about role playing phone scripts, role playing in home presentations, lead consultations, you know, every single appointment you book, you know, having a discussion and help you do a worksheet, help you select the correct products, in home help on the phone to talk directly to your clients. Those type of things, I believe, is what enables you to be successful very early on. It enables you to go out there with limited product knowledge and make money, uh, learn why you earn. And it really, I would say thousands of you know, percentage points increases your ability to succeed because you're not alone. You're talking to somebody that has success, which is why I reject the, the, the recruiters that don't have that experience and cannot help you. So number three is agents fail because they focus on commissions rather than service. And you know, again, this is something that I reject even my own agents. When you start looking at commissions rather than what's in the best interest of the client, you're going to fail. You're making a mistake. It's another reason why insurance agents fail because they focus mostly on commissions rather than the service that they're providing. Yes, commissions are important. We all do this to make money, um, but I've always been taken care of if I put my clients first. 
but renewals are more important as by video number two, which is up here on how we make money. You want the business to stay in the books. You also want to get referrals. So the better you do at that client relationship, that client service relationship, the, better, the more successful you're going to be as an agent. The only effective way to ensure your client's renewal business is by providing outstanding service. Your outstanding customer service will always be your secret ingredient for success in this industry. Unless you're willing to exceed the expectations of your clients, your agency is no different than the other 10 in your neighborhood or on the internet. In order to succeed and not fail, you have to separate your agency from the rest of the pack. An exceptional service is what gets you there. How you run your business is really not up to you. It should be up to your customers. Look, it's simple. When you put the needs of your clients before the needs of yourself, you are headed in the right direction of creating a highly successful agency rather than one that eventually fails. The bottom line is this, new agents need to understand why insurance agents fail just as much as they need to understand why they succeed. When they enter the market with reasonable expectations, right, controlling that mindset, right, which controls your expectations, you have a support system to rely on and you put the needs of the client before your own needs, you will soon discover how rewarding and profitable this industry can be, right? You're going to have the ability to develop a successful business that will serve you and your family for many years and generations to come. There are so many other reasons why insurance agents fail, but these are on the top of the list. The more informed you are about these reasons, the better equipped you will be for this business. Now, I'll finish with this. I, I, I mentioned it earlier and kind of in, quickly in passing this whole lack of training. And I, let me preface this by saying the reason why I say that is, is that there's a lot of agents that don't show up, right? I mean, we have a fantastic program, a, a fantastic training program. We have calls nearly every day on different areas of the business. So if you're weak in one area, you can show up. But getting people to show up is largely a, a, you know, a consistent constant issue right and, and and you know because they look at this thing like it's my part-time business so i don't want it to be i don't want it, you know cons to consume my life full time i'm in this thing to write one or two apps a month i get it it makes sense but you have to learn the business right you have to you have to you have to earn the right to be able to be in it part-time both in focus and in activity Right? I mean, it's very difficult to be successful in something or to learn something when you're plugging into a training once every three, four, five weeks. You're getting your license does not make you an insurance agent. You have, it makes you an agent that has a license. But in order to excel in this business, you've got to learn the business. But if you're not showing up for the trainings, you're missing nuggets that are being told by other successful agents. You're, all you're doing is putting your success at risk and extending time it's going to take you for, to learn. And once you learn how to make dials, how to select the products, how to connect with a client in the home by doing an educational in-home uh, presentation and writing the apps and getting it to the carrier and getting it from submission to commission, then yes, maybe you can spend less time in the training part of, the, part of this business or, and not take advantage of some of the conference calls that may or may not be for new people and pick and choose. But in the beginning, there's an old saying, you've got to make a deposit in the bank before you can make a withdrawal. So early on, you're going to have to put more time in this thing to learn the business. And then as you become successful, maybe less. And then, you know, of course, once you know how to do those things I just mentioned, you know, you could probably pop in and write, a bit, write an application one month and not do anything for three or three months and write them. If you want to be very, very spare time, you might be able to do, be on that course. But you, I don't believe you can do that early on because you're never going to learn right? It's like popping popcorn. If you put the popcorn in the microwave and you push that power and then the phone rings, you turn the power off and then you finish the phone call, you go back and push that power on again and you keep doing that, you're never going to pop popcorn. It takes constant heat over a period of time to pop popcorn, right? So early on, you've got to apply a large amount of heat to this thing to learn the necessary parts of this business, you know, that I've identified here, that make you successful. And then when you start popping popcorn, maybe you don't have to invest that kind of time. But early on, you got to make a deposit in the bank before you can make the withdrawal. 
I hope that helps. The top three reasons why insurance agents fail. There are more, but I hope you got some value out of this business. Look, if you're brand new to the channel, this is the kind of thing we put out here. All the if you're out there confused, if you're looking for a place to learn this business, look, the people want to talk about comp rates. And all that. Comp rates don't mean anything if there's no support, no training, crappy leads. I mean, okay, you got a high comp rate, but you ain't making any money. It has to be a mixture. It has to be a balance. But as I know in my business and my career, that mentor and coach, it's worth learning from somebody that can teach you the business early on. And then, like I said, from that point, you're free to do whatever you want to do. If you're looking for a place that will teach you to be successful and be able to make, you know, $250,000 your first year to business, give me a call, send me an email, shoot me a text. If you're not and you want my help and you want this document, the most important answers that you must have before signing with that IMO recruiter, click the link, sign up for the Agent Success Academy. Everything's free. I'm not selling anything here. I don't sell leads. I don't sell training. This is all about trying to help you get on the right course to be successful in this industry so you can build a life of residual income and passive income and own your life and own your income rather than renting it. As always... Appreciate the time you spent with me today, and we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and mash that bell if you want instant notifications. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.